Luke chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gesenaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And when he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed that he would thrust out a little from the land. So, you know, he, he was teaching and he was, he was teaching them. And he was in the ship and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch into the deep. Let's go fishing. Let down your nets for a drought. For a drought. And Simon answered and said to him, Master, we toiled all night. We, we you know, we've been fishing all night long. Uh, and we toiled all night, and we have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great magnitude of fishes, and their net broke. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ships, that they should come and help them. And they came, and they filled both the ships, and they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, Lord. For he was astonished that they were all that they that all that were with him, and the draught of fishes which they had taken in. And also and so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth you shall catch men. And when they had brought their ships into the land, they forsook all and followed him. I, I want to stop there and, and talk about this just about a moment. Sometimes when we uh, Jesus comes near to us, you know, he, bring, he, he brings his blessings, but we don't recognize it when it's, when it's here, sometimes when it's, when it's in front of our face. We come close to the times when the Lord is, is, is near to us and he's trying to get a blessing to us and there's different levels to it. There's different levels to it. Um, the first thing we want, I want to point out is that Jesus had him position his boat to be ready. And this is a great time to talk about this because this is like a little bit of a, this is a cryptocurrency group, right? And Jesus, Jesus is in the, in the boat and he says, listen, I got a message for them, but we're going to have your boat acting like it's about to thrust off, right? So the boat was parked. He, he said, let's pull, let's pull a little away from the land. Maybe Simon's thinking, okay, maybe it's for just in sakes, but maybe Jesus likes to float on the water a little bit. Um, maybe for the, for the acoustics of the, of the, of the casting. Uh, but maybe it's just to illustrate the sermon or to bring in position to bring him glory for what was about to happen. And maybe Jesus knew what was going to happen. I think Jesus knew that Peter was there for a long time, fishing all night, and he didn't get anything. I think the Lord knew that. But Jesus told him, let's, let's push off a little side. Let me stand in the boat and I'm going to preach. You guys can finish cleaning your nets. That's fine. But they were getting to the point of exhaustion because they had been in the market for a while, the fish market, the you know, in the water, and have not got anything. And sometimes we can be hearing, you know, Lord, I hear about this crypto. I hear about that crypto. Lord, I hear about the, the changing of the political situation. Lord, I hear about this, this person coming back. Or I hear about this. Or when is the justice going to happen? Lord, I don't, I don't know. It's just taking a long time. And we get weary and we get tired. And sometimes Jesus has said to us, let's cast out one more time. And, 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 you know, we got the Peters and the superfoods in, in the house. And we're like, you know, you know, Lord, I've been margined so many times. I've been, Lord, I've been, you know, Lord, I haven't caught any, any, tr any trades. I haven't had any good results. Lord. And I don't know, but I'm, you know, I, I know that what you're saying and, and this is right. So I'm going to be in position. And, and sometimes it's the tr there's a training of obedience to hear God's voice. And maybe it's not about the money at all. Maybe it's to the point where we can start hearing and, and would we trust God, even if it didn't sound reasonable or right. You know, if our spirit, in your spirit, you feel the peace of the Lord, but your mind is telling you, no, no, it's crazy. Don't, don't give that. Don't do that. Don't go there. You know, and every, you know, there's a, there's a point where your spirit, you have the peace of the Holy Spirit. There's a time when we don't have the peace of the Holy Spirit, but there's a time when it's our own mind and when it's our own heart that is just like, ah, I don't want anything to do with it. But the Lord is saying to go or go and do your body may be tired and you don't want to do it and the Lord is saying go and do and it could be a lot of things it could be more than just trading it could be the things that God has trained you but just like Abraham who was told to sacrifice his own son that didn't sound right but it tells us in the book of Hebrews that Hebrew, Abraham did it as, un, as it was faith because he had faith that God would save his son somehow even though God said he wanted to sacrifice he was like wait a minute wait a minute you're the same God who told me I would have lots of children so I believe that either you're, the, you're able to bring him back from the dead or you're going to do something. You're going to do something. I don't know what it is, but you're going to do something. I'm going to believe in you and I'm going to go through the process even if I don't want to or if it's hard, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be obedient to you. 
Sometimes the obedience is tiring, exhausting. It's, you've been fishing all night. It's been a long time. You don't want to do it anymore, but when the Lord is with you, trust. Because a lot of the time, it's the time when you're the closest to your greatest breakthroughs. And here's what we have. So it says, Simon answering him to say, Master, we toil our night. We've taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, then what happened? A blessing. Oh, oh, look, look. And it's a blessing. And it was more than they could handle. It was like, whoa, whoa, we need a team to help bring in this blessing. I, I, I can't do it alone. Now, 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 see, the problem is, man, I can't do this alone. But later on, it's, oh, I can't do this alone. It's two, two problems you want to have. It, you, I'd rather have the problem of having too much than having problem not enough. And um, praise God that he didn't have to do it alone. The other people that were around the people who were obedient also got blessed. I mean, think about that. These other boats, hey, there's way more than we can handle. Oh, come and help us. You're going to get blessed too. And it says, it says right there, and both of the ships were full and began to sink. Now it was so much that they couldn't even, they were drowning in, in well. Now, now they were drowning in abundance. It was, it was way more than they probably could ever expect. There. They didn't even have the capacity to accept a blessing. That's why the Bible says that I will pour out such a blessing that it's beyond, uh, uh, pour out such a blessing more than you can uh, hold. Press down, shaken together, your cup will be running over. Imagine having a cup. It's not just compressed. It's not just in there. When they give me the, look, when I go to the movie theater and I order the popcorn, don't you be giving me that popcorn without tapping the bag. Don't you be doing that. If you're one of these young teenagers, don't try to rip me off. I'm going to be like, tap the bag. Hey, hey, tap me off. And they'll do it. They'll put a big bag and I tap the bottom and I press it down and I shake that bag and all the popcorn starts sinking to the bottom. I'm like, look, fill me up. You didn't fill it up all the way and they go, oh, I'm sorry, sir. Like, no, you're not sorry. You know exactly what you're trying to save money on that popcorn. Don't, don't be stingy with my popcorn. I like my popcorn. And so I send it back. But God, you don't have to do that with him. When it's his blessing, it's often so much more than you can ask or think. And it, you shake, he's like this with the blessing. Let's shake it down. Let's, let's, take a, let's take the press machine and press the popcorn and press it all the way to the bottom and fill it up again until it's overflowing. More than you can hold. That's the kind of press down, shake it together, your cup will run it over. I want that kind of popcorn where it's falling off the side. And I've, I've met some of those people at the movie theater and they fill you up and it's all gotten all over the table. They don't mind wiping. They're like, here you are. So I'm like, whoa. When you open my eyes because of the blessing, that's when I'm, that's when I'm happy. But that's what God, our Heavenly Father, wants to do with us. Some of us are going to be stepping into those blessings really soon when it comes to some of these trades that you have. Some of these cryptocurrencies you're just waiting. And it may be tiring, but like the Bible also tells us about the pregnant woman. She has so much labor, it's so hard, but when she gives the birth, she forgets all the pain that she had in life. And it's the same with walking into eternity, into heaven. Even uh, all of our troubles and tri tribulations are going to be considered light afflictions in light of eternity and the blessings that come. It's going to be like, wow, it was all worth it. It was like, oh wow, you're going to even say, wow, it wasn't even enough to pay for a fraction of the joy that we feel here in heaven. So there's, there's blessings all around us, and the, the blessings are going to be coming even to the people around us, and their obedience too. This is also why I'm so glad in Dive I work together with you guys as a team. You guys are out collecting a lot of information. You guys are hearing this, hearing that, supporting each other, doing this. You know, hey, what are you guys doing? What are you doing here? What are we doing? You guys are, are, are working together as a team, and what's going to happen is when we start going up as a group, you guys are all going to start going up as a group. Same with, same with gold. You guys know what I'm talking about. This is going to be the same types of deals that the blessings just going and flowing over everyone because they're, you guys are working together as a team. Some of you guys are going to start businesses. Some of you guys are going to do real estate. Some of you guys are going to do. Some of you guys are going to be supporting each other for probably many, many years of your life. We're even starting a, a, a singles uh, uh, event. We're trying to do a singles event possibly in June if it's possible. I need some people to say, "Hey, I want to help organize that." And uh, if we can do that, uh, I want to even team up people. You know, we want to we want to start enjoy uh, getting people in, in, in with uh, you know groups, men, women together, working together as a team, or even men's groups and women's groups spawning from a lot of these different things. We there's so much potential for the blessings. Hey, there's a blessing here. Come on, let's get in the boat. And what is God starting to do with the body of Christ? Starting to give collective dreams, collective visions, helping us, guide us. I want God to do more of that. And even more so in the future. Could you imagine at tomorrow, by the end of this weekend or something, that Luna goes up, right? And, and you guys are swimming in millions, right? Some of you guys are going to be swimming in millions. Now you're going to look at, you're going to look to me and you're going to say, what next? We're probably going to move to uh, Sheba and XLM. We'll probably do, you know, some of those, those transactions. So we're going to pop up. We're going to probably put another quarter of our portion in XRP. We're going to be moving into these, these cryptos and, and in these trades. And, and we're going to be getting and constantly moving in positions. There's going to be things that we're going to be ready for. And, um, hey, the boat is sinking. You know, as the Bible said in the original body of Christ, there was not a, uh, that, that they were taking care of each other because from time to time they would sell something as they need. They would sell their houses and their properties. Wow. Wow, I would love to be just be uh, selling trades and, oh, let's sell one XRP. And XRP is maybe a lot of money, right? Just to cover, you know, a cruise ship for everyone. You know, I would love that kind of thing, right? Anyway, let's stop there for today. But I wanted to say a few things last. When Peter was affected differently by the blessing, at first he was like, yeah, wow, it's my boat. Wow, I'm rich. 
And then he was like, whoa, it's more rich than I can hold. Hey, everybody, you need to be rich too. And then they got wealthy. But then it all got to a point where it's ridiculous. And he realized the ultimate thing is that it's not a matter of how much wealth he had. It was what was happening. He started looking at the source of it all, and that source was Jesus. He'd been a fisherman his whole life by trade. He dreamed of having a big catch. But what is that in the light of having the source? It's like, you're like, wow, golden egg, wow. But then you finally found the goose that lays the eggs. And then what good is the eggs? See, we look for money, we look for wealth, but who is the source? The Lord can give and the Lord can take away. May his name be praised. Peter found a treasure that was greater than the fish. Fish can go bad. You can make a lot of money in the fish market, but fish can go bad. The Lord, he's the one who can bring the fish. And he immediately was like, wait a minute. If he's the source, I should follow him. But if he is the source, I'm not even ready for this. I'm not even worthy. This is, this is beyond me. I'm not. I'm not. And, and, and so all of this blessing started leading him to this point to look at himself and see the truth. And the truth was he was a sinner. He was a sinful, sinful man. And, and that cut him to the heart. And, and he dropped down on his knees and said, Lord, away from me. Just, I, you're the Lord. He, he acknowledged him. He says, you're the Lord. You're the Messiah. You're, you're my Lord. Away from me. Because I'm sinful. Like, you don't deserve to have me even in your presence. You're standing in my boat and everything. But see, all the facade that he had, you know, the fisherman and the, the, you know, everything. He was just a boat. Yeah, it was fine. It's Jesus, everything. But then he started realizing it went way much deeper than he thought. And he saw the spiritual ramifications. And then from there, he took off his label. He took off everything. He just said, you know who I am, Jesus? You know who I am? I'm a sinner. And I don't deserve this. It's beyond me. You know, please go away from me because I'm just a sinner. And Jesus said to him, fear not, because from henceforth, you will catch men. So Jesus saw beyond what Peter thought of himself. Peter's saw his eyes were just like wait a minute he went from wow I love the money and then to like wait a minute it's not it's, it's more than I can handle to I don't even deserve this and to ooh, I'm a wicked man and this comes from God I'm a wicked oh I don't even deserve to be standing on my knees on my feet and he drops to his knees before the king of kings all of that sometimes the blessing is gonna bring about this thing happening I would love this happen before we get the blessing because sometimes we can be corrupted in the ark think about when Jesus taught about the man who was the prodigal son. The prodigal son immediately stepped into wealth. Half of his father's wealth belonged to him. He immediately received his wealth and went out and his brother said that he spent it on riotous prostitutes and riotous living. He went and lived the ark until he went all the way back down to being hungry again. And then he said, I don't even deserve to be a, uh, to be a servant in my father's house, but perhaps, perhaps he'll even let me be a servant because I'm not worthy to be called his son. See, he had the ark and it went a long time. Some of us are going to wake up to millions, probably on Sunday, probably this month, probably when Luna pops up this month, possibly. And some of you guys, if you're not ready in your minds and in your hearts and your spirits beforehand, we can really become corrupt and no one can tell us otherwise. We may walk away and that's fine. You'll walk away, but then you may walk away from the Lord. Don't do that. Don't do that. And, and so there's some danger that can come when you start stepping into generational type wealth. You may have one of those arcs. But it's better to do like Peter, to play it in your mind. See, this is why everyone thinks maybe Peter was stupid, but I don't think so. I think he was very brilliant. I think he was a tactician. I think he was smart. And in his mind, his heart, he went through the whole emotional cycle in one moment. Wow, whoa, whoa, wait, what? Huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, a, in a silly sense, it's basically something that may have happened with Peter, what we can gather from the scripture. And Jesus, luckily, and blessed him. Jesus saw beyond all of that. And he says, listen, you may, have, you may be a wicked man. That may be what you are. Maybe you don't deserve it. <laughs> if it was the Lord, maybe the Lord says, yep, you're right. You don't deserve it. Maybe he would have said that. I don't know. The Lord's more, more loving than me. But the Lord would have said something. But you know what the Lord did? He said, I'm going to give you a purpose. And in the other Gospels, it also tells us your name is Simon. But now you'll be called Kephas. Uh, uh, now you'll be called Kephas, which means little rock. And God gave him a nickname, Peter, which means little stones. Uh, we know that God was giving him new identity. He was looking at him different than he looked at himself. Peter just saw the sinner, but Jesus said, I am the salvation. I am. I'm able to be what you are, what you need me to be. And, and, and that's just a fantastic thing. And he said, and you know, from now on, you're going to move from beyond just catching money, uh, catching money and catching trade. You're going to be catching people. You're going to be catching souls. I'm going to give you a purpose beyond this fish. Fish is great, right? It tastes good. But it doesn't last into eternity. Souls can last into eternity. And when you bring those before the Lord, you know, I had a prophet friend. He used to say, one soul is worth it all. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this reading. I pray that you would help us to not be corrupt. And I pray that you would prepare our hearts in advance before we receive the abundance of fish. We may wake up to a day and, and, and we may have so much money, but I pray that we would also run and remember to drop on our knees to say thank you to God Most High for bringing us our deliverance, for delivering us from this world's current system. And when we look around us and there's so many hurting and so many struggling, I pray that you would put it in our hearts and help us to be able to be an aid and reach out to those who are hurting just to make it through the week. There are those who need your help. There are those who need the help, but you're gonna make us your hands and feet. And we're gonna help financially. We're gonna help those families. We're gonna help those people in our communities. We're gonna help those struggling widows and orphans and those struggling fathers in the church and in the people. And we're gonna point the way toward you so that people won't give money the glory or us the glory because we don't deserve it. But you give it to us and you're gonna make us the millionaires. You're gonna make us the billionaires and we're gonna help take care of our fellow man. We're gonna help take care of those in Taiwan. We're gonna help take care of those in those countries that are really, really struggling. You'll make us resources upon the earth. You'll make us blessings and vessels because you're gonna give us more money than we can ever even use. You're gonna make us so wealthy, but we're gonna do our good. We're gonna do good and we're gonna make you proud of us. We're gonna do good because we are even able to give at our current levels. And we've been faithful to give at our current level, so we know that it, as your word says, if you bless us a little, we'll be blessed in much. Do so unto us, Father, and we we will we want to be a part of it. And let us always remember the most important thing, the souls. As we point our way to the cross, as people are fed with bread in their stomachs and having their rent paid or the things that we do for them, whatever the things we do for them, Lord, I pray that we would use all that is in our hands to point our way towards eternity, towards you. May you bless them. May you keep them. May you make your face to shine upon them. May you look upon them with favor. May you be abounding to them with grace. May you lift up your countenance towards them, Lord. May you give them peace. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's cue the outro music.